After last week's horror show at Ibrox, it's all about the reaction as the Dons welcome Hibs to Pataudry. Kickoff under the lights is just one hour away. Let's put it into context for you with Kilmarnock also playing tonight against Livingston. But a win for the Dons tonight will take us into third place with a game in hand over Hibs as well. So, plenty at stake. Hi everybody, a very warm welcome to Ali Beg ABTV here on YouTube. This is the preview show ahead of tonight's game against Hibs. We've got a rather busy show for you tonight, but before we get into it, I would like to begin by giving a shout out to a guy called Malcolm Park. Malcolm has become recently an ABTV contributor. And he has joined a membership scheme here on the channel. Now, if you go to my YouTube page and you'll see a little button that says join. If you click on it, you'll see a little video of me explaining the benefits of being a member. But what it basically means is for a very small fee, monthly fee, Malcolm has now set me on the road to be able to continue this channel and make the sort of content that I want to bring to you. So Malcolm, you have no idea what this means to me personally, that you have become a contributor. So many, many thanks. So tonight, coming up shortly, I'm going to be speaking to three members of the Aberdeen Melbourne Supporters Club, including a very fine chap called George Campbell who played for Aberdeen many, many years ago and for nearly 30 years was Aberdeen's youngest ever debutant at the age of 16 years and eight months. We'll be talking to the three all the way from Australia very shortly. And a little bit later on, Walker McCall is going to be reminiscing about a rather hilarious incident that happened in the dressing room in Romania, on this day, back in 1981, it's not to be missed. So, let's crack on. The team news is in. So, the manager has made just one change from our game against Rangers. Hayden Colson comes in for Jack McKenzie. You will notice that there's no Johnny Hayes in the squad tonight, despite a late fitness test. So... Let's have a look at the formation. Some of you have already commented about not playing three at the back. Now, don't take this for gospel. This is not what is coming out of the football club. This is what I think Jim will do tonight. Now, I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. I just have a feeling he'll play a 3-5-2 with the five sort of being in a diamond formation. So this is what Jim has actually had to say in his pre-match press conference. I think back to the Motherwell game where we lost 3-2. We then went on a four-game unbeaten run after that. When I think about the humiliating and disappointing result that we had at Tanadice, we then went and won our next three games after that one. We're looking for a similar positive reaction after last weekend's result. So, tell me what you think will happen. If you're on your way to the game, please have a safe and enjoyable trip. If you're already inside Pataudry, drop me a little note and let me know what you think will happen tonight. Tell me what you think about the formation, about the change, and I will do my best to read out all of the comments. So, let's get to my pals at the Melbourne Aberdeen Supporters Club. So this interview was roughly 15 minutes long because George was on and also two of the prominent members from the Supporters Club. And we chatted about tonight's game. We chatted about the Supporters Club and the activities that they do. And obviously, I caught up with George as well, who told us a little bit more about his time at Aberdeen. So I really hope you enjoy the chat and I'll see you on the other side. Here are the chaps from the Melbourne Aberdeen Supporters Club. 
Chaps, it's fantastic to see all of you. Thank you so much for taking your time to come on and talk to me today. Ali, I would like to start with you first of all. Can you tell me a little bit more about the Melbourne Supporters Football Club? Tell me a little bit about the history. Sure. Uh, well, thanks for having us, Ali. So the, the Supporters Club was um, started in 2009 by a handful of um, expat Aberdeen fans. So Michael Duffy, uh, Brent Engelhart, Jimmy McMillan and Coley McMillan. So around four of them started it off and it became a Facebook group. Um, it's also affiliated with the club. So if you go onto the AFC website and search under Supporters Clubs, um, we're listed there. Um, and it kind of grew from there. There's currently around about 150 members in the Facebook group. Um, I'd say, you know, due to COVID, the numbers have kind of dropped off. We have people come and go from Melbourne, whether it's backpackers or people for work. So there's probably a hardcore, smaller number. Um, but we have we have around 150 people, which includes um, Adam and honorary member George Campbell as well. Fantastic. George, we'll come to you in just a moment to talk about your time at Pataudry. But Adam, if I can come to you, you're actually a season ticket holder um, at Pataudry, okay. despite living in Adelaide. But how much fun do you have being a member of this supporters club? Oh, it's great. I've made, made some mates. Um, so Ali and I are good mates now get together. I'm actually just in Melbourne next weekend and we're trying to organise to have a drink together. So um, probably the best fun we had was the, a great night at a, a pub in um, Melbourne the year that we thought we could all win it when we knocked off Celtic that time with Paul Quinn's late, late goal. And uh, oh, yeah. that place just erupted that night. Yeah, mm -hmm. You guys must have so much fun getting together. How often do you get together, Adam? Uh, well, it varies according to what's on. As Ali said, it's been limited at the moment because of um, uh, COVID and so forth. But um, a few of us got together just to watch the replay of um, Gothenburg in 83 at a local pub when I was over there a couple of months ago. Um, a, a local Scots pub. The owner uh, also has AFL on. So when I said, can I bring around and put on a Don's video, he thought I was talking about Essendon Football Club here in the AFL. But he was a great lad. Yeah. George, um, thank you uh, for coming on with the guys. It's very nice to meet you. So I would like to take you back to your teenage years because for many, many years, you were Aberdeen's youngest debutant at the age of 16 years and eight months. Can you recall that day? I appreciate it's a while ago, but can you recall it still? Oh, firstly, thanks for having me, uh, Ali. Um, yeah, look, these uh, these memories don't leave you. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I remember the day before probably the best because it was Jimmy Bontron that gave me my opportunity to play in the first team. Um, and uh, on the Friday before, which was Friday the 9th of August from memory, 1974, <laughs> long time ago. Uh, me and Walker McCall were staying at uh, Constitution Street with a few other boys. And uh, I'd just been uh, told by Jimmy Bonson that I was starting the next day. And it was a beautiful day. And uh, George McRae uh, was number one. And that song resonates for me because... We sat on the steps at Constitution Street, just listening to that music um, and getting really motivated for the game tomorrow, <laughs> the game the next day. So, yeah, a lot of great memories, great memories there. I'm glad you mentioned Walker because uh, we'll be talking to Walker very shortly. But I'm interested to know who gave you your nickname, White Pelly? <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's the White Belly now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, look, that all went back to my childhood when I was very, very young. A, a, a lad by the name of Eddie Hunter, who was like a mentor to me when I was growing up, uh, he, he dubbed me the, the White Pelly. And uh, I was walking down the street with my mum one day and there, a few of the boys were going past saying, hi, Pelly, how you doing? And my mum went crackers because she says, what are they calling you that, that for? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and then, look, when I went to Aberdeen, I started going to Aberdeen when I was 13 years of age and I, I, I used to train with the first team at 13. Really? You know, which was, it's remarkable when I think about it now. Um, and the boys just took, they just went along with it really, I think. I don't know if they were just humouring me, but it got out that that's what my nickname was and it, it sort of just stuck really because that's what all the boys call me when I go back home, you know. 
Brilliant. Uh, we'll come back to you, George. But Ali, if I can just go back to the Supporters Club. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the activities that you guys are doing? I appreciate that there's been some issues with COVID, etc. Yeah, so in, in the early days when it was a smaller group, we used to just find pubs that we'd show an Aberdeen game. And generally it would have to be if we were playing Rangers or Celtic. And, you know, I, we occasionally um, back in the day had to watch an Aberdeen Celtic game in a Celtic pub in a Celtic bar and you just kind of take what you can get. Um, but as, as the group kind of grew, and I think at one point, as Adam mentioned, there was that, that game where um, we, we, I think we, uh, it was Paul Quinn scored the winner. And uh, I think we had about 40 people there. And the, the guy that ran the pub was a Celtic fan. He was putting on beer and, and chips for us as well. So in terms of activities, probably the biggest activity is um, just organizing to get people together for the big games. Um, and that kind of peaked during the Derek McInnes era as well. Um, I, I was actually back for all the cup finals, but the guys that weren't back were able to get a big group together. Um, and there's some photos and footage of those days. So probably just the best thing is getting the guys, getting the group of, of Aberdonians together and other people like Adam who have that connection with Aberdeen mm. um, and getting them together for those one-off games and then friendships kind of develop from there and there's a bit of banter on Facebook. But yeah, it's ebbed and flowed, not, not just because of COVID, but after the cup finals with Derek and the, and the team kind of tapered off a bit, I think the interest kind of waned a little bit as well. Mm. Um, but there's a few of us that still try and keep things going in the Facebook group just to kind of keep that, that connection going. Um, I think the one that kind of springs to mind for me was probably where Adam um, mentioned already, we watched the entire Real Madrid game uh, on, on, in May this year in a Scottish pub. There was myself, Adam and Jamie McMillan. And um, we were getting heckled by the uh, the, the bar, the, the guy that won the pub's a great guy, his name's Jock and the pub's called um, oh, The Cross in St Kilda. Um, but the locals were kind of giving it what's this you're watching because clearly it's 40 years old and it was, uh, you know, it looks a little bit dated. But we, we held firm and we were right there till till uh, the cup got held up at the end. And then we um, I think we had a couple of whiskeys at him. And then, uh, yeah, we said thanks very much, Job. So I think just the friendships that have come from that and just, just behind me here, Adam, I'm not sure if you can see that. I've got signed Willie Miller and signed Alex McLeish. And, that was a present that I got from Adam when we were back for one of the cup finals. So Very yeah, nice. just those kind of, I think those kind of friendships and that kind of, it's, it's a, it's a connection that you make. And <clears throat> even if it's another two or three years before we have a big game, I think we can still pull a crowd together when we, when we need to, even though everyone gets a little bit older, people have kids, they have other priorities, but um, I think the, the passion for the team is still there. Mm. Adam, obviously we've got a game coming up very shortly. How do you see tonight's game going against Hibs? a coin alley depends which Aberdeen show up yeah. Doesn't it? yeah I think you also talked about that on your uh, your October review show so look none of us know. I think it's at home we tend to play better at home and I think guys touched on in the um in that review show is that you know when we've got the ball we don't look too bad but when we don't have the ball it's a worry and um I agree that our defense I think is a bit rocky it's sad that Ross McCrory often has to go back there to cover as well on occasion mm. um but yeah, I agree with the sentiment without trying to sort of single out individual players as a whole, the defence needs to improve. Um, consistency is, is, is difficult. Ali, what about you? How do you see it going tonight? Oh, look, I'm, I've watched every game this season on, on Red TV um, for good and for bad. And I think we need to see a reaction from last week. I think we saw a reaction after the Dundee United 4-0. So I think we need to see a... A similar reaction. I think the biggest question for me is the, the formation, whether we continue with the 3 5 2, because it didn't work last week, but it's worked in other games. It allows us to play two up front. Um, but also, Hibs are going to be quite uh, quite good going forward. I think there, I think there'll be goals. I think both teams, I suspect it's not going to be nil nil. Um, I think we're, I think we'll shade it. It could be 2 1, it could be 3 2. I think Hibs will score, and I just think we have to score more. It's mm -hmm. as simple as that. I think we just need the confidence. I think with it being a Friday night game and I think the Ryan Porteous factor could give the crowd a bit of an extra edge as well. I think we'll give him a warm welcome. Um, and if we can wind him up and maybe see the, the other side of Ryan Porteous, then, you know, I think that would, we, we, you know, we've got that issue from the last game that I think we'll have the players fired up for it and the fans as well. So, um, yeah, like, like Adam says, it depends which Aberdeen turns, turns up. I, I think I've got a feeling the good Aberdeen is going to turn up. Um, as long as we don't make too many silly mistakes at the back, 
and concentrate on the forward players. I would like to see a few changes. I think Matty Kennedy and maybe Vinny to come in and Johnny Hayes if he's fit. Um, I think he's got a light fitness test, so it really it really depends who. Obviously, Duke's got to be in there. Whether Miofsky is going to going to fit in there as well, it really depends if it's three five two or four at the back. Um, whether we play two up front or go four two three one, um, but I, I think we'll see the right Aberdeen turn up this week. I think I think we have to. The incentives there, finishing or, or finishing, you know, going going um, third with a game in hand, and then another two games to the World Cup. Not a bad place to be if we can finish third before the break. Yeah, absolutely. George, I'd just like to finish off by just asking you a, a couple of sort of additional questions. How much do you look back on your time with Aberdeen? How much how much fondness is there in your memories? Um, look, obviously a lot of fondness because, I mean, I got an opportunity that um, you only dream about, really. You know, I mean, to play to play at that level um, was, yeah, look, I think I listened to Michael Owen and I, I, I sort of like in my... My jar, well, no, don't not don't compare me with him, please. I'm not trying to say that, but he said something that really resonated resonated with me um, in a in an interview, and he said he peaked too early, and and I think that's what happened to me because I bypassed. I didn't. I went from uh, going from the an apprentice, um, you know, as a ground as ground ground staff boy. Um, to Peter Head, I was farmed out to Peter Head for a year, year, and look, I performed quite well with Peter Head, and I think, look, I think Jimmy Jimmy Bontron was going through a bit of a tough time at the time, and I think he was desperate to get solutions, and I was plucked from nowhere basically and to get my opportunity, um, and and you know that probably. I reckon in, in hindsight, it probably wasn't a great thing for me personally because I didn't go through the, the Teddy Scott sort of tutelage side of things because, you know, when I went with Teddy, um, I was already a first-team player, which, you know, didn't really help me, you know. Um, but, I, I look, I've got a great deal of fondness going back. I go back every year, Ali. I've been going back for the last 15 years, apart from two years in COVID. I've uh, been taking my tours back and we play Aberdeen every year always go back up to Aberdeen and um, always catch up with all the boys, you know, like John Gardner, Dougie Rugby. Um, I keep in touch with Alex McLeish still. Um, and when when I'm in Aberdeen, I've caught up with a few of the, the boys from the past, you know, in, in that era, you know, boys that you probably watched at the, the cross uh, alley. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so, so look, a lot of fondness, a lot of great memories, um, and yeah, I, I, cher I cherish them. To be honest with you, I mean, uh, you know, really, 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 really appreciate everything that happened to me at Aberdeen. Just to finish off, can you just show everybody, George, what is directly behind you, and just explain <laughs> what that is, please, hanging on the wall? That thing there. <laughs> yeah, that thing. I shouldn't say that thing. That's uh, this is what I call my Aberdeen room, Ali. <laughs> uh, I've got all my memorabilia from Aberdeen. Actually, I've got some from Australia here. I've got a South Melbourne strip up, and I've got my Scottish youth strip up there as well. Uh, but that one there is the Scottish League Cup final in 1976, which I was fortunate enough to be a member of the squad. And for, well, not unfortunately, I, I didn't get on the park, but uh, just to be a part of that and to be included in that. Um, well, it's my fondest, one of my fondest memories, even though I didn't actually get to play. Mm. Uh, but you know, I think I got, I think I got a game against Stilling Albion on the way through in the rounds, and I think that was about my my contribution. I think, and I think Ali McLeod must have thought, oh, well, he, he was he was a part of it at some stage, so we'll get him in the squad. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Guys, listen, yeah. thank you so much for jumping on today. I really appreciate it. And um, continue the great work with the Supporters Club. And uh, George, hopefully we'll, we'll get to meet one day when, when you guys are all over in Aberdeen and we yeah. can get together. So thank you so much. It's lovely to meet you all. And we'll see you all again soon. Thanks, Thanks Bye bye. See you guys. See you guys. Oh, it was so good having the guys on. We pre recorded that interview earlier today before the guys all went to bed. And I know that up watching and getting ready for tonight's game. So good morning to all three of you. Just off the back of that, I just thought I would let you know that actually in April this year, George was awarded a life membership with Football Victoria due to his services to football in both Victoria and Australia 
as a whole. He's done a phenomenal job over there since he left Aberdeen in 1978. So many, many congratulations to you, George. And again, guys, thank you so much for coming on. Let's get to your comments. Uh, thank you. I know I keep saying this every week, but the live numbers that watch the show increase week on week. So thank you for jumping on, right? Let's get through some of these. So Paul Rieke, hi, Paul. We need a good start and keep it up for the whole game. And we need to sort out the defence in January. And he went on to say that he really enjoyed the show last week with the good guests. Thank you, Paul. Kaiser has come on, left many comments and has asked how everybody is tonight. He says he thinks he's got a draw written all over it, but he'll take a 5-4 win. <laughs> Hi, Kaiser. How are you? Scott W has predicted a 3-1 win for the Dons tonight. Graham Buchan has said, I will take any win but would like a good team performance. Um, Kevin Gibb has said, we need three points tonight to keep a cushion on third place. He's predicted 2-0. Come on, you Reds. Paul Donaldson has said, I'm sure Ryan Porches will get a good welcome at Pataudry tonight. No danger he will. Don't forget, the gaffer is in the stands tonight. Christopher Mainland has said, I think three at the back can work against teams outside the old firm, but we need a plan B during the game if opposition are exploiting gaps behind the, win, uh, uh, behind the wing backs. Gosh, didn't we bang on about that in the, in the monthly review show, Beg to Differ. If, if that happens tonight, and Jim's got to change it, and he's got to change it straight away if we play three at the back, of course. Um, Paul Donaldson has put a question out to you. He would like to know, what does everybody think of Jim Goodwin being back on his touchline ban? Saw his interview on Red TV and he didn't seem to think it would be too much of a problem for this match. So let us know what you think about the ban. Um, so... <laughs> Alan Stewart I said about the band the young lads will get peace to play as he can't hear the roaring instructions from the touchline <laughs> um, Derek Griffiths hi Derek how are you three points needed tonight after that horror last week come on lads get stuck right into this lot Alan Stewart has said three points will do uh, S Kuska has said hello let's get torn right into them from the start, and he goes on to say, we need to ignore Porches and concentrate on our defending. Exactly. How many are we playing at the back? Well, I predicted we're going to go with the three at the back formation, but you never know until kickoff. So keep your comments coming in, and I'll get to the rest of them before we close play tonight. Right, let's get back to the game. Let's bring you the match stats. So Aberdeen have won their last three home league matches, scoring 11 goals and conceding just once. The Dons have not won four in a row since November 2018 at home. Hibs have only won one of their last 12 league visits to Pataudry and Hibs have lost 10 away matches in the Scottish Premiership in 2022 which is more than any other team. The man in the middle tonight is David Munro. Now if you hadn't if you haven't had the chance to go to Pataudry tonight or you're watching from afar, this is Dolly Digital's quite tremendous match day programme design. And this design will mark the 50th anniversary of the design of the club logo, which you can see right in the middle there. It was designed by a guy called Donald Addison, who used to design the club's programme covers in the early 70s. Isn't it an absolute beauty? So, who's into their history? Let's look back on what happened on this day, back in the club's history. Back in 1959, Aberdeen welcomed London Giants Arsenal to Pataudry for a friendly match. This was only the second time in the club's history that the Dons played under the new stadium floodlights. On this day, back in 1981, Aberdeen qualified for the third round of the UEFA Cup after drawing 2-2 with Romanian side Arges Pitesta. This was the day that saw the infamous Fergie 
tea urn incident at half time, which is just coming up with Walker McCall in just a moment. And on this day, former Aberdeen striker Robbie Winters was born in 1974. He is celebrating his 48th birthday today. So, let's get Walker McCall on. So, on this day back in 81, as I just mentioned, Aberdeen travelled to Romania. I've written about it in my book as well. Um, and there was this incident at half-time because Aberdeen found themselves 2-0 down at the break and Sir Alex Ferguson absolutely hit the roof with the players. So let me introduce you to Walker. He is making his debut on Ali Beg ABTV tonight. Now, we had to do this interview in a bit of a rush because it was a last-minute call. Um, this was before I came into the studio and before Walker made his way to Pataudry, where he's working as an ambassador tonight. So I, we both basically did it from our homes. But if you're not aware of Walker McCall, just let me bring you his stats. So he had two spells with Aberdeen between 1972 and 1976 and 1980 and 83. Made 63 appearances for the club, scoring 23 goals. And here he is telling us about that incident at halftime in Romania this day back in 1981. Hi Walker, it's great to see you. Thank you for jumping on. Let me take you back to this day so many years ago. You were actually part of the travelling squad for that game. Tell me what happened at halftime. <laughs> uh, just the, man the manager was waiting in the dressing room door for the players coming in off the park. And as soon as you see him standing at the door, Ali, you know he's not a happy guy. Uh, I think we were losing 2 nothing at half time. One they played, and he just went berserk. I think he started in Gordon's track, and I think Gordon hadn't been playing well. And, and Gordon, the way he is, Gordon sort of chipped back. And by this time, he was walking around the dressing room, and there was this, the metal T-urns that sits on the top of the bench was there. So he just... Gave it a push. No, I don't know how if he's thinking there's maybe nothing in it. I know, but it's full of tea for all them at half time. And of course, the arm went flying off the bench, hit the floor, the lid came off, and tea spurted all roads. And mostly towards Wally Muller and Alan McLeish, they were sitting sort of next to each other and sort of spurted towards them and turned their clothes and that. Wally shouted, You'll be paying the cleaning bill for that or something. <laughs> and of course, Fergie's. Fergus ranting on and that, and still having to go out wee, hey, wee Gordon and that, and Gordon's arguing back, and I think Mark McGee joined in and that. So, but anyway, he just he just went through the whole lot and like a thing of salts and that, and getting his point across. So, obviously, something worked as well as I say, went back out in the second half and got an early goal, and then we got a goal hey, later on in the game to equalise. And then I think that was us getting through, I think. Five or six, two, I think it was an aggregate. Can you tell me? I remember a story that you told me, which I would like to share with people that are watching tonight. Did you hide in the toilets just before you went back out? Well, I was I was needing the toilet and I went to the toilet, and of course he's still ranting and raving, but by this time the players were getting back out into the bar. So he's now talking to Archie and his coaching staff. And I'm thinking, I better just stay here. I better no good because you'll think I'm logging in to what he's maybe saying. <laughs> so I just, I just hid in the toilet. And I was still doing the toilet, and then I heard the door kind of closing, and I opened the toilet door. I was in and I kind of peek out and seen there were nobody going about. And I just, I just headed out there as well. Brilliant. How much are you looking forward to tonight's game? I'm looking forward to it really well because I think the last time I remember I did, I'm working tonight as an ambassador. So mm -hmm. the last time I'd worked on an ambassador Friday night game, it was against Hibs as well, funny. And the atmosphere was just amazing, Ali. Really good. And the thing is, if you go out the night and you get a result, one, it pitch you up the league a wee bit better. Every in the garden last Saturday against Rangers is forgotten. It's the start of the people's weekend. So they're away up the town and Everybody's just happy, see, really. That's the start to uh, hopefully a good weekend for everybody. Just to finish off, how much are you enjoying your ambassadorial role at the club? I love it, Ali. I love it. Uh, at first, I was very nervous, and we Joe says to me, didn't he be nervous, Walker? Just go to the table 
introduce yourself and you'll probably find out that the majority of people know you and then they'll start asking questions and then they'll, they'll remember like some games and they'll ask you questions about games, uh, stuff like that. So as I say, I just love it just meeting the meeting the fans and talking to them and that. And obviously you've got stories, as I say to you, I've told you a good few stories. Uh, you'll tell them or they remember something and bring something up and you reply back to that. So I just love it. Really enjoy it. Fantastic. Walker, thank you for jumping on because I know you're heading to the game now. So enjoy tonight and hopefully we'll see each other soon. Uh, no bother, Ali. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you, mate. There we are, Walker McCall, who will be who will be right now at the football club as a, uh, a club ambassador in the lounges and a fantastic job he does as well. I just love that story about the Tiern incident. And you can just imagine... Gordon Strachan, right, going back at Fergie and chipping away at him and making the boss even more angry. It's just the best story. I absolutely love it. And guys, thank you again for the uh, for all the comments coming in tonight. Um, Scott W has said, I think we have to stick with three at the back. It's proved fairly successful for us. The longer we stick with it, the more successful it will be. Al Mitchell has predicted a 3-0 win for us. Um, so, guys, thank you. Superb. So we are done for tonight. So that all that's left to say is the very best of luck to the lads tonight. Let's start the game brightly. Let's start on the front foot. If things aren't quite going our way, then let's hope that there's changes made. There's going to be a really decent crowd in tonight. So they deserve a decent performance from the lads tonight. The incentive is there for all of us to see to get to third place, then we've got Livingston, then we've got Dundee United, then we've got the World Cup break. So three hugely important games starting tonight. So guys, I'll come back with the review show, not tomorrow, because it's Saturday night. I don't want to spoil your Saturday night. So we'll come back on Sunday at nine o'clock. So all that's left to say is the very best of luck to the lads, and I'll see you again soon. Have a fantastic weekend, folks. Bye for now. Bye for now.